Researchers sample a random selection of divorced workers at a corporation and test if the percentage of divorces that involve blue-collar workers is 50%, white-collar workers is 45%, and the executives is 5%. Does the data collected below fit the sample size requirement for a one-way chi-squared test? So the sample size requirement for a chi-squared test is simply that we want to make sure the expected value for each cell in the table is at least 5. So we have to make sure that the expected values for each cell is 5 or higher. Okay, so let's try to figure that out real quick. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to look at the percentages that are given to us and we're going to say that basically you know our expected value is the n, the total sample size, times the probability that we expect for that category. So for example, if I take a cell like a blue collar cell, the problem says that that cell is supposed to have 50% of the workers, right? That means the expected value for the blue collar workers, that's blue collar, expected value for the blue collar workers, should be n times p for the blue collar workers, right? Now what that means is that the n is just the total number of values in our study. So we have 50, there's 85, there's 89, so 89 people are involved in the study, right? 89 workers. And the probability that somebody's in the blue collar category, they say, is 50%, so 0 0.50. So if we work that out, we're basically saying half of 89. So of course that's uh, 4450. So 4450. All right. At that point, um, it's clearly greater than five, and since that's greater than five, it meets the requirement. So the first cell is okay. The expected value is large enough. Okay. Now from there, what we want to do is look at the next category, the white collar category. So expected value for the white collar category is next. So white collar and it'll be n times the probability for the white collar category. The n, of course, we said was 89. Now, the white collar category, um, its percentage here is supposed to be 45%, right? Well, we don't have to do even the work here. We can see 45% of 89 is also going to be bigger than five, but we can check. It's 89 times 0.45 comes out to be 40.05, so 40.05. That also is bigger than the 5%, or number, sorry, bigger than 5, which is what we're supposed to have. Now, the last category, executives, is going to be expected value for executives. So we'll use expected value for executives. And it'll be n times the probability that someone is supposed to be in the executive category. So 89 people involved in the big study, that's our n. And then the probability that someone is an executive according to this, it says is 0.05, so 0.05. So I'm looking at 89 times 0.05. Well, let's put it this way. If I took 5% of 100, I'd get 5, right? So 5% of anything less than 100 is less than 5. So I know at this point it's going to be too small, this value. Let's work it out to make sure, though. If we do uh, 89 times 0.05, we end up with 4.45. 4.45 and this is a problem. That number is too small. The expected value for each cell has to be 5 or larger. So I'm going to say this expected value is too small. So the test assumptions are not met. So what we're saying here is that because that expected value for the executive cell is below 5, we can't say that we've met the assumptions for a chi-squared test. At that point, um, the data is not appropriate for this type of procedure.